Welcome back to another Kentucky Derby profile here on Racing Run. Now, we're getting towards the end of these Kentucky Derby profiles. We're going to be talking about Jace's Road right now, the last horse in the Kentucky Derby, at least on the domestic side. Continue R, the Japanese horse, does have the auto bid there. So uh, on the domestic side, Jace's Road is number 20 right now. Drew in with Chad Brown deciding that Blazing Sevens was going to pass up from the Kentucky Derby. Uh, Jace's Road, winner of the Gunrunner Stakes at the fairgrounds for one of his two wins. He's been very feast or famine though uh, as a racehorse, but we will talk about some of the nuances from the races that he has had. So he broke his maiden. We'll start off with when he broke his maiden. Uh, he broke his maiden at Ellis on August 6th. And actually, I do need to back up for just a moment. There is a playlist. I have been doing this at the start of every video, but I'll do it again. There's a playlist down in the description to all the other Kentucky Derby profiles that we have had on Racing Rundown. So be sure to check that out to catch our other profiles. Now, back to... Jace's road, he broke his maiden at Ellis on August 6th. Uh, then he jumped right into Stakes Company from there, ran in the Iroquois at Churchill Downs, and he was stakes placed there, but, uh, and he was stakes placed in, in a race that had a couple of really well backed horses that were coming out of nice efforts at Saratoga. Damon's Mound was the winner of the Saratoga Special was actually not the favorite there because Echo again was coming out of a nice Saratoga maiden victory. Those horses got more play than him. They ran worse than him, but Jace's Road kind of just ran okay in that race, uh, which was won by Curly Jack of Tom Amos's barn. And from there, Jace's Road ran in the street sense at Churchill on August, or excuse me, October 30th. And that race, I will be fair to Jace's Road, that race was a little bit uh, or looks worse on paper than it actually was because he dropped the jockey in the post per at loading into the gate and he was loose as a result of that and he sort of burned himself out a little bit and that contributed to why he ran as poorly as he did because he got loose uh, and you can kind of, as a result of that, you can kind of draw a line through that race. But even if you draw a line through that race, there are still a couple of efforts that leave some to be desired from him. But we'll move on to clearly his best career effort uh, on all factors and all accounts, which was his five-length victory in the Gunrunner when he got to make all there uh, and draw off, drew off, I should say, to win by five and a half lengths. Now, overall, mostly a soft field, but he did beat Ray's Kane, who came back to win the Gotham eventually, uh, and, and the winner is is a decent enough turf horse. So some back class in the some back class from the gun runner. Siphon that into a run in the Southwest. Now the Southwest was never going to go well for him uh, because he was running against Arabian Knight and uh, he was sort of taken out of his element there uh, by Joe Talamo. He didn't go up there, try to run with Arabian Knight. And by the way, if you're not a listener of Racing Run, now, Arabian Knight was a horse that both Eric and I said very early on was going to win the Kentucky Derby. We even floated around the TC phrase with him. But Jace's Road didn't get to make the lead there. And as a result of that, ran as poorly as he did in the Southwest. Uh, but then he rebounded, uh, ran in the Louisiana Derby, picked up a decent third place finish there, sat off of Kings Barnes, who made all in that race. Uh, his, uh, sitting second there, uh, finished third, and that was enough to net him the derby points that with one defection got him there. So that's how he got here. Figures kind of a mixed bag overall, hovering around the mid-70s for most of his career. Again, you can kind of, you can absolutely, absolutely toss the street sense, I should say. You do have a couple of the good numbers at the fairgrounds, but his career best is a 90, and that is pretty low for the majority of this crop. So he's below what I would classify as the mean of this crop. So that's certainly something that you have to take into account with him. But we'll get to the pros for him. He does have a five-length victory in a Kentucky Derby prep race, and that was also over a horse who also won a prep race and a subsequent start. So that's one thing. He's also got the Churchill Downs experience, and I've talked about that for horses 
throughout this trail, I like horses that have experience over the Churchill Downs surface. Now, the street sense, he didn't really get much out of that, but he did place in the Iroquois, and that's an early spot to jump up to a mile and a 16th, and he jumped right from six furlongs uh, where he broke his maiden at Ellis into the mile and a 16th there. So, And that's kind of a, a race, the Iroquois. Usually it's a sinker float for those kind of horses, and you, we've seen horses run in the Iroquois not really get the trip there, uh, but eventually as they go forward, they settle into it more. So certainly an early start, or an early opportunity to run at the mile and a 16th at the two turn trip. But I, I can say that in his first start, he ran okay there. Slight cutback from that into the gun runner. Uh, that was a mile, actually, correction, that was not a slight cutback. The Philly race is a mile and 70 yards, but the Colts race is a mile and a 16th. So obviously had that effort in the gun runner. And I did mention that the gun runner has some decent back class to it, but we'll get to the cons for him. And this is where Jace's road really kind of falls off the deep end and he needs to be in front and probably needs to be alone in order to have success in his prep races. Now, one positive for him on that front is there's not a lot of early foot. So uh, right now, as we're drawing things up in this early or in this Kentucky Derby, so he could probably be with maybe at the most two or three other horses making the early running. And Jace's road needs to be in front to have any kind of success. Rating him is not going to do him any good. You go back and you look at the Southwest. That was the problem with him there. He didn't. He rated, and not that he was going to win, or not that he was going to be any close to Arabian Night. Probably would have run relatively similarly to how he did there, still much well beaten, but rating him is certainly not going to do the trick there. So he needs to be in front, and most likely probably needs to be alone if he's going to have any success. I don't know that he can be alone, but since the pace scenario is very murky, it's a possibility that he could be alone. But he faded in the stretch of the Louisiana Derby. And one of the things about the Louisiana Derby, which is why I like it so much as a prep, is it gets horses the opportunity to move up and trip right before the Kentucky Derby, not just to the mile and an eighth. And Jace's road was kind of backing up toward the end of the Louisiana Derby after there was a very soft pace that was set. Now, maybe you credit that to Disarm, who was the only horse who closed into that race, but you look at the horses underneath Jace's Road there, Shop, or you look at the horse specifically underneath Jace's Road there, Shopper's Revenge. And outside of Disarm, it was a merry-go-round for those one, two, three horses. The horses that were one, two, three throughout the entirety of the early running were first, third, and fourth there. And those were Jace's Road, or excuse me, Kings Barnes, Jace's Road, and Shopper's Revenge in the correct order there. So that's something to think about is the move up in trip. He kind of faded a little bit toward the end. And then the final one is his speed figures are just kind of average when you compare them to the rest of the field. His best effort was a 90 coming in December. He hasn't equaled that since. And I wouldn't really classify the fairgrounds or the uh, Louisiana Derby, I should say, as reaching back up to that level of the 90s. So Jace's road has to improve on a lot here. I will say one other thing about him. I have gotten flack in the past for insinuating this, but I am going to throw this out there because this is a possibility. Brad Cox and the Alba family also have Angel of Empire. And Angel of Empire is a closer. Jace's Road is a pace horse. It's a possibility, and I stress this, a possibility that this horse could potentially rabbit for JR for uh, Angel Vampire there. So that's just another thing to think about if you're considering Jace's road at all. I don't really know many people that would be because there's a lot of negatives to him, but this horse could potentially also be a rabbit in the Kentucky Derby, which isn't going to bode well for his chances of winning the Kentucky Derby. But uh, a horse that's probably going to be a very easy pass on Kentucky Derby Day for most people. I likely will cross his name. He will likely be one of the first names that I will cross out. With that being said, that's it for this profile. We will see you next time and be sure to check out our other profiles for this 2023 Kentucky Derby. We'll see you next time.